Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is actor location? Let's run through a quick little example here. You're not really going to see much. Basically, I'm using the set and get actor location nodes to set and get the actor location. And as you can see here, I can move it up, down, left, and right. Well, let's go ahead and look at the notes. You can go ahead and ignore any of these errors. These errors are due to the fact that I am creating, for example, a blueprint to test with. However, the value change nodes are firing off before it's created. So it's simply causing a, hey, I can't find what you're actually trying to do. Just temporary issue. You don't have to worry about it in the concept of this example. So for this example, I'm creating a box. It's just simply a box blueprint, which is a cube with a box collision on the outside set to block all. And we're going to see why that's important here in a minute when we use our notes. Now the notes when referred to, if I type in actor location, you're going to find, of course, they don't come up. Because the target is an actor, we need to make sure contact sensitivity is turned off. And if so, we can find the get actor location and the set actor location nodes. There are other nodes. You have things such as actor location and rotation, relative location. These are not what we're covering today. We're simply covering the base set and get actor location nodes. You need to make sure they're hooked up to a target. In my case, it's my created box and we have a couple settings. Let me go ahead and pull up the default settings. And move it over here, and we're going to find this. Now, by default, we're going to take in a target. That's going to be an actor. In this case, it's my created box. You're going to take in a vector 3 for your location. Keep in mind, because this is a vector, which is a struct, we can always right-click and split. And that's how I'm putting in individual values for my x, y, and z. We have two checkboxes here, a sweep and a teleport. I'm going to cover these shortly. And then for outputs, we have a sweep hit result and a return value. Now let's look and see how these work. For setting the actor location, you simply can put in an X, Y, and a Z, which is what I'm doing in this case. And when I change these values here, you'll notice it's changing the X, the Y, and the Z value of my box. That's it. Now this is the set actor location node. It works directly on the actor itself that you're talking to or the root. If we look at this item here, we find the cube, which is my root item, which is what this location is going to be set on. And then we have a box, which is an actual child underneath it, which has its own location, rotation, and scale. When we change this right here, when we set the actor location using a target actor, it's setting the location of the entire item which is basically the root of the actor. And that's important because there are relative location, world location, actor location, actor component location. All that we care about for this one is when you're setting an actor location, the actor that you're targeting, you're setting the entire location for the base of that item. Anything underneath it, if I go back here like a box or if I had another child, their stuff is not changed directly. It's all relative, of course, to the root. For our options, we have sweep and teleport. These deal with physics and collisions, as well as overlapping. And it's whether or not overlapping collisions and physics are going to be affected by when we set the location. If we run this example oops, without anything checked, and we go ahead and set our Y to something like 300. Well, actually, watch when I move it left and right. You'll notice I have a wall here, and it goes through the wall. We can actually go to the, we can actually try not to fall off, go to the other side, and you notice it goes through the wall without an issue. Let's go for 500. Let's go back to zero. Let's type in 500, and it's going to move from here to here in what looks like instantly over one action, one frame. However, if we check sweep, and we go and run this again, and we try to type in 500, well not try to, but we type in 500, 
you will notice that I did it on the wrong one. Okay, so I meant to do on the Y axis, not the X axis. Let's try that again. Now that I changed the Y axis, I changed this to 500, you know something happened. It no longer went through. It was stopped by this item because of collision. When we have sweep checked, basically it's going to move from the starting point to the ending point. Basically where it is currently to where you want to set it to. It's going to sweep in that direction. It's going to move. It's going to do line cast. It's going to pretend as if basically you moved it over time. And if there's anything in the way, blocking, overlapping, it's going to trigger them or in the case of what we just showed, because our cube is set to block all and this is a blocking object, it's going to get blocked when it tries to go past it. So if you notice here, it's fine going left, but when I get to this point, it's going to get stopped. It cannot go past. No matter what I try to do, if I try to move from the current spot to a spot on the other side of the wall, it's going to get stopped. That's because it's sweeping and it's hitting. Now if you have sweeping checked, then these options are going to actually give back valid results. If the location was successfully set, if it's not swept, or whether the movement occurred at all, if it's swept. So basically this is a true or false if your location was successfully met. Let's go ahead and print string. We'll go ahead and feed in our true and false here. And we'll run this. Now when I move my Y, on the top left you'll see true. And then when it gets stopped, you'll see false. The location was not successfully set because of the block. Now if we uncheck the sweep, we go ahead and hit play. We'll try this again. You'll notice it's true the whole time because we are able to go to our location. We are not being blocked and there's no overlapping issues. So that's what our sweep does. Teleport, basically, if we have teleport set. Now you're not going to be able to see this in this example, but I'm going to show it. We have teleport set and I set our Y to 500. We are going to move from the starting point to the ending point, which is 0, 0 to 0, 0,500. And because teleport is checked, anything that is using physics, maybe you have physics constraints or you have dangling parts or you have like, for example, a ragdoll type body, teleport, if it's checked, is going to immediately move it over as if nothing happened. It literally was in one spot to the other. If you have teleport unchecked, basically the velocity is based on the sweeping. It's going to pretend like you moved it. So if you move it at a large distance, like zero to 500, and you don't have it teleporting, it's basically going to pretend like you moved it really quickly and you're gonna have some very wild physics reactions. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to be using physics and you want to move something a large distance, you're using a set actor location, you might want to teleport it so that way the physics aren't affected or else you're going to get some very wild results. Now the other node to go along with the set actor location is of course the get actor location. And that one's pretty simple. You pull it off of any actor. You can get the actor location. There are of course other versions of it. We just want the get actor location. And it returns back to vector 3, the location of that actor. And of course we can split it and get back the individual x, y, and z components. That's it. That is going to wrap up our get and set actor location nodes. Remember, this applies to the actor itself, not an individual component. If you want to think of it as an individual component, it's going to be your root scene component, your root item on your actor.